Hello, oracles. Today I'm going to share with you my dividend game strategy. This is a strategy that I came up with. It's not financial advice, but this is what I'm going to be doing starting tomorrow, moving into the future to be able to build up my passive income to be able to live off of that down the road. So this is a strategy that is going to be changing over time. I have been working on this over the last few months to begin with, just trying new things, figuring stuff out. This is what I have come up with. This is something that even when it comes to any investing whatsoever, you really need to make sure that you're doing your due diligence and research. Take a look at all of the different companies or ETFs that you are going to be investing in and pay attention to them and monitor them regularly to ensure that they are still on track to where you want your goals to be. So for me, this is my starting point. There could be many adjustments over time, and I will share those as time goes on. So today, I'm just going to break down that strategy for you guys, the different companies I'm going to be investing in, and what my entire plan is. So we will get into that in just a minute. All right, so my reasoning behind doing the things the way I am doing them in this because I do anticipate a bit of a market rally before we end up getting a bigger market pullback sometime next year. My guess is we may end up seeing some sort of pullback starting probably in Q2 of next year, maybe hitting the bottom sometime around this time next year. So with that said, if we get this run, I want to have some cash flow coming in to be able to take advantage of that when we get to that point next year. So an argument can be made and some say, well, why don't you put it into growth stocks? You can actually make a lot more because you're going to be capped on all of those high income ETFs. I do get that, but nobody knows how to time in the market. So at what point do I sell? Do I know that it's coming down? In 2022, we had no idea how far it was going to come down. We didn't know that we were starting to come down. We thought for many months we were going to rebound. So is that going to be the same scenario? I don't know. So I don't know when I'm going to sell. What I do know is that with these high income ETFs, I will have that cash flow coming in. So when I have that cash flow coming in, when we do see the market starting to dip, I can utilize that cash flow to instead of dripping it back into the ETF itself, I can use it to buy those other ETFs or other stocks that I want to purchase because that stock price is coming down and it'll be a better way to DCA. That's the reasoning behind why I'm doing this. And again, that strategy can change over time if the market conditions also change. All right, so I will scroll through this slowly because I know it's going to be small on your screen. You can take your time to pause this and expand it if you want. Again, this is not financial advice. This is just my strategy that I came up with. I will be tweaking this over time and sharing as I tweak it. So my dividend game strategy is my goal is to get myself to $10,000 per month in passive income. And I love Tesla stock. I do think Tesla is going to be the most valuable company in the world in the future. So I like to accumulate as many shares as possible. My goal is to get to 4,444 shares of Tesla in the next 10 years. I chose that number because four is my lucky number. So four fours is even luckier. So the breakdown for this, and you'll see down below, I have three different levels of income. There's high income ETFs, stable income stocks and ETFs, and growth income ETFs. So the breakdown here is I'm going to be looking at $2,250 per month coming in for my high income. That income is going to be feeding these other two to speed up the process. The stable income will be about $5,500 per month. And then the growth income will grow even more over time. This is where the generational wealth comes in. So my goal is to get it $2,750 per month and then continue to let it drip and grow from there. So as I note here, as stable and growth income reach higher levels, I will sell off the high income as they have high expense ratios. That is another one of the downsides of these high income plays is the expense ratio is very high. It's like paying an annual fee that's really high for these when you don't need to as these down here do not have an annual fee of that amount. So while it really is in the grand scheme of things, negligible for the fund itself, in the long term, it does add up. So it's much better to have these stable and growth income plays instead. So the actions I'm going to be taking to get to this level. So I'm going to be adding $350 per week, and you'll see how I disperse that $350 down below. I'm going to be dripping all of my dividends back in until each one of these hits $250 per month, and then I will do a split drip on them. That means that I won't immediately drip it back in. I will take $100, reinvest that back into the stock or 
silver ETF, and they'd take $150 of that and put it into the next one in line, thereby pushing that snowball further down the hill. Now note here, I may be more or less aggressive on this depending on the market conditions. For instance, I may drip the entire $250 if I think market conditions favor that ETF and it's worth it to put it all back in. Conversely, if it's not worth it, I may not drip any of it back in and put all of that money into the next line or somewhere else. Now, I also recognize that especially with these high income yielding ETFs, their dividend can fluctuate significantly. So $250 one month, maybe $120 the next month or $400 the month after that. This is why I am going to be monitoring on a regular basis to see where I think the future is going to go. And again, this plays into the how much I'm going to be dripping in or not. So once each ETF reaches that $250 per month goal, the additional investment amount shifts to the next in line to build the snowball. For example, the top line here, TSLY, I will be investing $200 per month into this. So on the X date, I'm going to be putting half of that in of $100, and then every single week will be another $25 that gets invested into TSLY. So once this ends up reaching that goal of $250, this entire movement here of the $200 per month will then go into QQQY, and I will stop investing into TSLY entirely and just continue with the split drip. And note here, if the market or ETF conditions are favorable, the amount and order may change. Conversely, if market or ETF conditions erode, this will also change the strategy. So again, this is based upon current market conditions, what I have below here. But if we end up having some better than expected conditions, it may stay like this way. I may change the amounts that I'm putting into these. Or if these do not look as favorable, I may dump them entirely and focus money elsewhere. So the growth income ETFs will not have a limit. As I set up here, this is what's going to be my generational wealth. I'm just going to let those continue to drip and just make sure that they are still on track. The long-term stocks that I have listed down below also will have no limit, but as we should do with every single security that we own, monitor it regularly to ensure the fundamentals are still strong. These high income ETFs that I am investing in have a requirement of 30% yield. To me, it is not going to be worth it to put my money into these as a high income ETF if they're not going to be returning at least 30%. So again, these change regularly. So I may be flipping these out here and there depending on what the market conditions give us. And also these are also strictly used to speed up the process and are not for long-term growth. You will not be getting any growth out of these high yield income ETFs. These are strictly for income to be able to feed the snowball down below into the stable income and the growth income plays that I have. Now I do have a spreadsheet made up and I will show you guys that in a moment. All of these securities will be monitored to take into account total return, not just yield and payout. High yield is great, but if you are losing money in the long term on them, you're not actually getting anything. So you'll see that I'm actually upside down on a few of these, but I am anticipating a turnaround on them. So that's going to put me back in the positive, but it's still something that I'm monitoring regularly. And if I don't see any long term potential from them and I'm actually going to be losing money, I will dump out of them. So now you'll see down here that the dollar amount next to each one of these ETFs is the weekly amount that I'm going to be adding in myself. And the letter represents the day of the week I will be adding them. So here are all of the stocks and ETFs that I will be adding to. So the top nine are all these high yield income ETFs, TSLY, QQQY, NVDY, JEPY, OARK, AMDY, CONY, AMZY and KLIP. So again, these are very high risk, very inconsistent with their payouts. But again, this is why I'm trying to get these at least the top five. I may cut this down to five instead of nine, but these here must be over 30% returns. And this here is where I'm going to try and get at least the top five capped out so I can take about $1,000 per month and start feeding it into all of these other more stable income plays. So now when it comes to these stable income plays, I do try to keep it pretty diverse. So I've got a lot of different ETFs and stocks in a lot of different areas because we don't know what the future is going to bring. If we end up getting into a recession, everything is going to end up coming down. However, this will mitigate some of that downside risk by having this diversity. So I've got SVOL, TLTW, SPYI, JEPI, JEPQ, HRZN, AGGH, O, ABR, VICI, Scion, Devo, CWEN, Key, High, 
ARCC, MAIN, QILD, EPD, ET, SOXS, and SQQQ. And now again, these are for stable income. They have all proven over time that their growth is there, but it's more about stable, steady income coming in for many of these. There could be minimal growth to these as well, which keeps them stable and not being yield traps, but still need to be monitored to make sure that they are still going to be growing and not losing or dropping dividends that they're paying out. These are all still things to be monitored. Now, my long-term growth income plays down here. These are the ones that I'm going to be adding to slowly over time and just let them continue to build for generational wealth. So these here, I've got SCHD, a fan favorite, DGRO, VIG, VTI, VU, VYM, VYMI, DGRW, XLE, XLRE, and SCHG. Many of these do overlap when it comes to their funds. I may consolidate these over time, but this is just where I'm at right now. I am open to feedback if anybody wants to give their comments down below as to what they feel about all of these, or if you own them yourself, please do share. With all of these together, they cover pretty much the entire market. I mean, VTI covers it pretty much all by itself, but this is to me some pretty good diversity. And then some long-term stocks that I have in here that I continue to grow. Again, Tesla, my goal is to get it to 444 shares. I've got SoFi, Palantir, Amazon, and Uber. So SoFi and Palantir, I think are going to be great long-term. Palantir may end up getting into the S&P 500 soon. SoFi, I think, is going to be one of those fintech companies that helps revolutionize and disrupt the entire financial industry. Amazon, obviously, we have already seen that disrupt the entire consumer market. And then Uber, for me, I threw this on the list because I think that Uber is going to be smart enough to take advantage of Tesla's robo-taxis in the future. And I think Uber is going to be extremely good down the road, and they should be getting included into the S&P 500 as well. Plus, there's talk about them paying dividends. So that's the reason why I put Uber on here is because I do think they're going to do well. And if they're paying dividends, that's another bonus for me to have them on this list. So now I'll show you guys my entire dividend spreadsheet. This is shared out to all of my members and patrons on a weekly basis whenever I update it. I'll give you guys a quick briefing on it right now. So each highlighted section here, so the yellow here is going to be the high income, the green is going to be the stable income, and then the blue down here is going to be the growth income. So I have this all broken down. I have how much the dividends are, which I will update as soon as they come in. Some of these high income ones haven't even started paying dividends yet. So I've got to still put those in here. So I break it all down below here. I also do have CDs that are coming in. I do want to buy a house. So I'm keeping the CD money rolling over at five and a half percent interest on monthly rollovers. So this is still bringing me in some passive income as I'm awaiting time to buy a house. So currently my entire portfolio is bringing in about $565 per month. Some of them pay quarterly. I just did the math on it to break it down monthly because it makes it easier. But some pay quarterly. The majority of the high income ones do pay on a monthly basis. Monthly basis does make it easier to track if you're going to be using it for actual income to pay bills and stuff. So it's nice to have that stable and steady income coming in. So the full breakdown here with all of my passive income, I'm making about $3.26 per hour. Not going to complain about that considering I'm doing absolutely nothing for it. And so down here, I broke out how much I have for total income, what the gain and loss is. Because again, if I'm not getting an actual good return out of this, is it even worth having these long term? So again, we saw a pretty brutal September. So while my total return on those high income ETFs is in the negative right now, I do think we're going to see a turnaround, which will put me back in the positive on this. So I will grow these to just get to the point where I have the income coming in. And again, that's going to end up trickling down into that stable income where I am positive on this. Now, the long growth ones, I am in the negative. Again, not concerned because these here long term are going to end up dripping and growing and that's going to be perfectly fine. So I'm not really concerned about this long term at all. So again, something I'm going to keep on monitoring to make sure I do stay in the positive on this, but this is not going to be too much of a concern for me. And so I do break down all of my goals here. So again, my goal is to get to that $10,000 per month income and then that 4,444 shares of Tesla stock, which I am currently at 73 shares plus. And so then over here, I do break down where all the payouts came in. So I have every single month laid out here and how much I got paid for each one of these ETFs. So as you can see, it's been growing more and more over time as I have been building up my portfolio. And then I have everything totaled up down here, including the CD interest that I have been accumulating over the year as well. So my total income coming in from CD interest is $789. My total income coming in from all of my dividends is 860. 
So my total passive income so far the year is $1,650. And now you can see here on this chart how my passive income has grown over the course of the year. Now, of course, I have been adding more and more to this as the year goes on, as I've seen more of the potential and possibilities with the passive income. So I've been growing it significantly. So a major jump from August to September. September is typically a larger payout month because that's a quarterly payout for many of these ETFs and stocks. So October may be a little bit lower, but it's not going to be that much lower and we'll continue growing into the end of the year where December will be another big payout month. So that's my breakdown. Hopefully this helps you guys out, maybe gives you some ideas for what you're doing with your strategy. I'm open to suggestions. I am newer to this myself. So please, by all means, share your thoughts in the comments below if there's anything you think I could do that would make this better also. Now, none of this is financial advice. Again, this is just what I'm currently doing. And again, I'm going to be tweaking this over time and we'll share an update as we go forward. So we will check back in monthly to see how this progress is going. I will let you guys know if I have made any updates to any of this and I'll keep you guys posted on my strategy. Otherwise, thank you guys so much for watching. I appreciate all of your support. Have a great one.